This is going to be a demonstration of TD Bench. We'll be running against a 1 gigabyte TPCH database. The queries that have been set up are in our scripts directory under TPCH queries. We want to take a look at one of those. We've put a comment string following select. That will cause the name to be shown in both the H2 database within TD Bench as well as the host database as the query name. This first query is going after the line item table. We'll start up TD Bench. And that runs our class and our database alias statement, setting up ACME as the database alias we're going to be connecting to. And it adds a before and an after run statement for linkages to the host database reporting. The script that we're going to be using merely has a defined statement to give a name for the test, serial, and then a title, and then a queue statement to create a RPT queued with the contents of that TPCH queries directory. It assigns one worker and then runs that. We'll go ahead and execute that now. We see that we got an error message saying that the there were 22 query executions, but there were 22 errors as well. We could look to see what the issue was from the test results. That was in run ID 6. So we do a, a select from test results where run ID equal 6. And it says the objects don't exist. That means that we have a problem with the fact that the database names were not qualified in the query. So let's go back. We prepared another script. And that one has the define and queue statement as we had in the last example. But we're going to add a before worker statement so that before the worker starts executing anything else, it sets a default database to TPCH, and then the rest of the test is the same. So we'll go ahead and execute that. And now we're, we seem to be running, and the test is complete. There were 22s executed and zero errors this time, so that's a lot better. But that was actually pretty quick. And one of the things that is important to know is whether or not the queries, in fact, are producing correct results. We've prepared another script that will tell us how many rows were produced and give us a sample of the output from the commands. In this command file, we are adding the rows statement, saying that we would like five rows out of every query that executes in the RPT Q. We also want to get the row counts posted. So let's execute that. And as it starts running, you can see that it's starting to produce some output from each one of the queries that are being executed. And that was run ID 8. We can see the effect of the row count if we look at the test results table. Last run was 7. This one is 8. And we'll copy this to Excel so we can view, it, view what it says a little bit more easily. We'll paste the results. And now we can see that the row count was null for run ID 7. 
However, for run ID 8, we can see that the row count more than just null. Another debugging activity is to use the explain option to see what the whether or not all of the objects exist, whether the syntax is correct on the queries, and whether all the rights have been granted. We've got that in another script. This is everything that we saw before, but now we're adding the explain for the RPT queue. Because we've got the uh, row count and rows still in there, we're actually going to see the, the top of the explain of each one of those queries. Normally, we just put the explain in there and just follow up on any error messages that appeared in the test tracking table. So let's execute that one. And now you can see the beginning explanation for each one of the queries. One final debugging option is the debug command. And that is simply saying debug on. With debug on, it will not execute any of the queries, but it will check to see that it's able to log in and check the syntax of all of your TD Bench script. So we'll go ahead then, let's go back and execute serial two. And you'll see that when debug is on, it says this execution of the SQL command was suppressed so that it saw that it was there. It started one worker, said that the connection was succeeded, but then it did actually did not run any queries and we've got zero results. Now let's take a look at workload test. The script for the workload test is very simply a defined statement, the queue before worker and run statements just like we had before except we're going to go ahead and put a parameter in there saying how many workers we want and another parameter that says how many minutes we want to run. Those parameters were also then used in the defined statement. So we'll go ahead and execute that for five streams. And we want to have five streams and it says minutes. I think we're gonna to wanna to run this just for 30 seconds. So I'm gonna say 0.5 as the number of minutes we wanna run. And we can see that it is now starting five workers to run for 30 seconds. By default, it will give a status every 10 seconds. So at 10, after 10 seconds, we've executed 146 queries, 6.6 .6 cycles, and we're 33% of the way through. At 20 seconds, we're now 66 of the way, percent of the way through, and we've done 295 query executions. And then finally, the test is done. Now this could also be run in batch mode. So let's quit. And to run in batch, we need to enclose the command in quotes. So we wanna run the scripts and we want to go 10 for 0.5. We'll copy that. And then we'll go again for 20 streams. We'll copy that again. And we'll go for 40 streams. It's quite common to go in even numbers of streams, 5, 10, 
20, 40, 80, which makes it fairly easy to recognize what the behavior of the system is as workload increases. And so now it's starting to run the test. As it runs this series of tests, I'm going to cut out the periods in between. You can just see the progress messages as we go through this. The 10 stream run is complete. It's now running 20 streams. The 20 stream run is done and now it's running 40 streams. And our test is complete. So let's go back and see what was completed with that last test. So we ran four tests in this series of workload tests, and then there's a serial test before that. Let's do a list minus five to see the most recent tests. And we see that in fact, there was a serial test, a five, 10, 20, and 40 test. We could use one of the reporting views to get a summary of what happened in the tests. That would be select asterisk from report tests where run ID is greater than eight. Order by run ID. That gives us a set of rows which we will paste into Excel, make it easier to read. And we can see that the number of queries executed, the number that, of, that were executed without error was the same as the number executed, which is good. And we have a slight increase and it seems to be tapering off when we get to 40 workers. We can go to the host database now and take a look at what's happened there. If I do a select asterisk from Acme benchmark dot test tracking order by one, I run that and I get the fact that there was uh, run IDs 6 through 10, uh, the client run IDs were 9 through 14, and I get the start and stop times, and those will be used in the reporting to select the rows out of either dbql or res usage. So let's go after select asterisk from Acme benchmark RPT test report test sum runs where run ID greater than five. order by one. And we'll copy paste that into Excel. And what we see now is not just how many queries got executed, but how many got executed with the run seconds, the AMP CPU, the parsing time, IO count. So from TD Bench, you get the what happened. And from reporting on the host DBMS, you get the why it happened. There are other views that allow us to take a look at uh, the individual query executions. 
the explains, which objects were used, and the steps within each query, which is very useful for narrowing down where you've got performance problems. Let's go back and take a look at one other view here. Select asterisk from Acme benchmark. Report system CPU where run ID greater than five. Order by one, two, three, four, five. So we've got some rows here from the res usage information. Let's copy and paste all of those to Excel. One of the things that we do often is just take a look at the run ID and time and plot that. So we'll select all that information. It's got the user execution, the servicing CPU, the IO weight, and the CPU IO. And we will go and do an insert charts. We would like all charts. We would like an area chart. And we would like a stacked area chart. And we'll click OK. And this shows what the CPU activity was during the system, during the, uh, I'm sorry, during the test. And we see that as we go to the most recent one, we end up with CPU pretty much near the, uh, near the top. For more information, go to downloads.teradata.com. There you'll find JDBC drivers and a link to the TD Bench for any database page. On that page, you'll find the current release of the TD Bench software, the current TD Bench user guide, a trifold command reference with all of the commands, instruction videos, and how to get answers to questions, to contribute content, or to report bugs. Thank you.